I'm so excited. Ladies and gentlemen, there's a word from God today, simply called a song for the season. This is one of those you got to listen to. You got to lean in. You got to watch. God is going to speak to your heart as we continue our series, My Worship, My Weapon. I'm telling you, man, this one is going to change your life. Get ready to get shifted. You know what I mean in a few minutes. Watch this. Psalm 40. For the director of music of David, a psalm. I waited patiently for the Lord. He turned to me and heard my cry. Watch him. He lifted me out of the slimy pit, out of the mud, out of the mire. He set my feet on a rock, gave me a firm place to stand. He put a new song in my mouth. Jesus, a hymn of praise to our God. Many will see and fear the Lord and put their trust in him. Now I want to do an exercise real quick, if you don't mind. I'm going to read it again, and I want you to close your eyes and just see the goodness of God as I read it over you. And just imagine him coming to your rescue. You ready? Come on, close your eyes. I waited patiently for the Lord. And he turned to me. My weeping wasn't in vain. He heard my cry. I was sinking, but he lifted me out of the slimy pit, out of the mess I caused, out of the mud, out of the mire. He set my feet on a rock and gave me a firm place to stand. I was out of words, but he put a new song in my mouth. A hymn of praise to our God. This story, this testimony, many will see and fear the Lord and put their trust in him. Lord Jesus, we're here for you. If you don't move in this room, we're wasting our time. We're passionate, but we're passionate because we remember your kindness, your faithfulness. And if we can get loud for the Gamecocks or for the Panthers or even for the Cowboys. And the Cowboys hadn't won since. <laughs> and if we can get loud for losers, then we can get loud for the victorious one. So we lift our voices and tell you thank you. For your goodness and your mercy, thank you, oh God. For your keeping power, thank you. For sustaining us, thank you. For providing for us, thank you. For food on the table, clothes on our back, keeping us in our right mind. We tell you, thank you. And if we had 10,000 tons, it wouldn't be enough. So this next praise is a praise of gratitude. We won't ask you for anything. We'll tell you, thank you for what you've already done. Help me. 10 seconds online in this room. Clap your hands, all ye people. And shout out to the Lord with a voice of triumph. Thank you, Lord. I got a message from God for you. And it's simply called a song for the season. Do me a favor. Tell three people on your way to your seat. You got to get a song for the season. Tell them you got to get a song for the season. You got to get a song for the season. Hey, Slim, Slim, I want you to get this shot right here of the lady in the green. Hey, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I have to say this because I don't know how many times I'm going to get to say this, but I'm so honored that my 93-year-old grandma is here. 93 years young, still in the house of God, still serving them. Come on, y'all make some noise before she fall asleep. I love your grandma. She about to get some good sleep. But she here though. She didn't sleep doing that music. That bass was hitting grandma. Grandma, oh Jesus. Now that it's calm, she about to get some good rest in peace, grandma. Living peace, that is. 
a song for the season. Song for the season. You got to get a song for the season. Now, I'm excited about this message, but before I jump into this message, wave your hands if you was in the room last week or you watched online. You caught it on YouTube. Come on. Yeah, last week I preached a message called Welcome to My Space. And just a quick brief so that you'll remember, whenever someone says thank you, the reasonable response is, you're welcome. Well, it's the same thing with God. When you tell him thank you, he says, you're welcome. You're welcome to a fresh revelation. You're welcome to my perspective. You're welcome to my space. He tells John in Revelation 4, come up here. I want to show you something. You're welcome up to an awareness of his presence. You got to understand, God is everywhere. He's always present, but many times we're just not aware that he's there. Worship heightens our awareness. I gave you last week 10, no, see, it was a test. I gave you my top eight, top eight reasons to worship, and let's just review. Number one, worship opens your eyes. I love this. There's a story in 2 Kings chapter 6 where the army is coming to get Elisha, and the Bible says that the, the servant was, was panicking. He comes to Elisha and says, oh, yeah, they're coming to get you. And Elisha prayed a simple prayer. He says, Lord, open his eyes. So that he may see his eyes were open and he recognized that there was an army surrounding the army that was coming after him. Worship opens your eyes. Number two, worship lifts you. You get an aerial view. You get to see things a little differently. As we lift him, he lifts us. Number three, worship is our purpose. We were created to worship. It's so natural to us that even if you don't worship God, you'll find something to worship. That's the only reason idol worship exists because it's in your nature. So if you don't worship God, you'll find someone or something to give credit to. Yeah, it's, it's our nature. It's our purpose. Number four, worship is forever. When we sing a song here and when we're jumping and leaping and when it's loud, can you imagine? And can you only imagine how amazing it is in heaven? We're joining an eternal worship service. It's ever existing. The Bible says the 24 elders and the four living creatures, they do not stop crying holy, holy, holy. It's the Lord God Almighty who was, is, and is to come. The reason they continue to cry holy is because his beauty and his enormity and his massiveness demands worship. It requires it. It's, it's a requirement in his presence. Worship is forever. Number five, worship produces joy. I love this verse in Psalm 16. It says that in the presence of the Lord, there's fullness of joy. Ladies and gentlemen, that means that partial joy exists outside of the presence of God. This is why the devil don't mind you doing anything but worshiping God, because he's trying to keep joy away from you. And if he can get joy away from you, according to the Bible, he can get strength away from you, for the joy of the Lord is my strength. Have you found it interesting that you can do anything other than worship undistracted? You can watch your favorite show on Netflix. The kids will leave you alone. <laughs> the dogs stop barking. Everything is nice and comfy. But the moment you say, Father, I stretch. Come on, Baptist. My. The cats start going crazy and the dogs are. Rawr, rawr, rawr. Kids just get. The, <laughs> the fighting. The devil want to keep you out of the presence of God because you know if you can tap in you can get some joy. Number six, worship prepares us. I love this verse, Isaiah 40. It breaks it down for us. It says, even the youth shall faint and be weary. The young men shall utterly fall, but they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up, get lifted on wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Worship prepares us. The worst thing you want to do is show up to a prepared place unprepared. You're talking about teach me how to dug you. You better learn how to be a wife. Come on, I'm preaching. Learn how to be a husband. Come on. Get prepared. Act like a business owner before you start a business. Be on time for your current job. Uh-oh, I done lost the church. <laughs> Worship prepares us. It prepares us. It renews my strength. It gives me the strength to mount up. It gives me the energy to endure. I love this about worship because it prepares us. It builds my endurance for my present season and it builds my faith for the season yet to come. Number seven, worship is a soundtrack of heaven. I know how to get natural people attention. 
Black folks, you play the electric slide. It don't matter if it's a funeral, they're gonna dance around that casket because that's that black anthem. <laughs> White folks, Cotton Eye Joe. Come on, don't look at me like that. That's my favorite song. Hispanics, Hey Macarena. Soldiers, the national anthem. But if you wanna get the attention of heaven, all you got to do is crank up worship in every language. Hallelujah mean hallelujah. In every language, Jesus, Jesus mean the same thing. I wish I just had some people in this room that would give God a diverse praise. Come on. I wish you would give him a shout like you know how to get the attention. I know how to get heaven's attention. I know how to get heaven's attention. The soundtrack of heaven. Number eight is my favorite one. This is a whole series. Worship is... Woo! Shout this like you mean it. Worship is warfare. Second Chronicles has a story about Jehoshaphat and the army's coming against him. He's outnumbered, the Bible says. The army's coming against him, but the Bible says, as they begin to sing and praise, good God Almighty, the Bible says that the Lord, woo! Ah, man, don't do it for the vine. I got to do it. Did you know this battle ain't yours? Let me say it to this side. Did you know this battle ain't yours. It belongs to the Lord. Ooh, don't do that, Travis. Woman of God, you can keep nagging that man or you can pray over him. I believe in discipline, but if some demons you're not going to beat out of that child, you got to... The Bible says as they begin to sing and praise, God did something that man couldn't do. Good God Almighty. There's some things that I can do in my own strength, but every now and then I need a God who is stronger than me, who's wiser than me, who, who, who has more resources than me to step in on my behalf. Is there any worshipers in the room that know how to get to heaven to war on your behalf? And so over the next several weeks, this is what we're dealing with. Worship. My worship. My weapon. Worship is an acronym. Now, I'm not going to tell you what all the letters mean. You're going to get them every week. That's why you got to come to church. But W last week was welcome to my space. And the S this week is song for the season. Song for the season. Let's break this down. Worship can exist without music. Ask me how I know. I know because it's the law of first mention. In the Bible, the first time the word worship is used, you got to hear this, is in Genesis 22. In Genesis 22, God instructs a man by the name of Abraham to take his only son, whom he loved. Not only is the first place worship is mentioned, it's the first place love is mentioned in the whole Bible. Same chapter. Take your only son whom you love to the mountain to sacrifice him. It was a test. Uh, Abraham gets to the full of the mountain with his servants. He turned to tell his servants, stay here. Me and the lad are going up to worship, and we'll be back. I like that. Terminator, I'll be back. I love that confidence. He said, I don't know what God's going to do, but I know we're coming back. Because there's no such thing as wasted worship. Every time I worship, he meets me. Every time I worship, he supplies my need. Every time I worship, I never leave empty-handed. I bring my burdens, he gives me joy. Come on here. I bring my tears, he gives me a fresh perspective when I worship him correctly. But I love this about the scripture. I got to tell you this. In this first mention of worship, you ready for this? There's no music. There's no tambourine. I love you, tambourine lady. There's no washboard. My mama used to be the cowbell in my ear. Y'all don't even know how to have church here. My mom brought a drumstick and a cowbell in her purse. Boop, 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 boop. This is before metronome, y'all fancy. Back in the day, you didn't have to be on stage to be a part of the band. Everybody had instruments. Mama had a cowbell. <laughs> Mama, where that cowbell? Bring your cowbell next time you go. I, I, would, I would enjoy that. <laughs> We're going to put you right here on the side of the stage. 
There was no cowbell, there was no tamarind, there was no keyboard, there was no guitar, there was no drum, there were no instruments. There was just sacrifice. But beyond that, because I used to think, like many of us, that worship is sacrifice. It's not. As Cain, he sacrificed. God didn't want it. Worship is not just sacrifice. Worship is a type of sacrifice God desires. Worship is obedience, because obedience is better than sacrifice. So it wasn't just the fact that he was offering something to God. He was offering what he asked him. Can I go deeper? Worship did not begin when he got on the mountain with Isaac. Worship began when he took one step in obedience. And this word is for those who feel like you got to have manifestation for God to be proud of you. That's not the Bible. God is proud that you took one step. Though a righteous man falls seven times, he gets back up. This is not a church that's going to condemn you just because you got it wrong. Baby, you took a step. If only we knew what you had to go through even to get here. I'm not judging you for not standing up and for not clapping. I'm just glad you're in the house of God. You took a step. And can I tell you something? Every time you take a step, God takes a step. Every time you take a step, provision takes a step. Ask me how I know. Now, I'm going to plagiarize. I didn't come up with what I'm about to say. A guy named Bishop Thomas Dexter James said this. It's probably right. He said, T.D. Jake said, he believes that every step Abraham took up one side of the mountain, the ram was taking up a step on the other side of the mountain. In other words, Abraham couldn't see the provision but with every step, God was meeting him on the way. And if you don't know the story, what happens is he get up there to sacrifice his son, and there's a ram caught in the bush. And this is where we get the name Jehovah Jireh. God provides. Provision met him at the place of worship. And I don't know who I came to preach to. I'm not going to suppose or assume it's you. But if anybody in this room need provision to find you at the top, I dare you to lift your hands right where you are and say, God, I'm taking a step in worship. I'm going to obey you even when I can't trace you. Even when I don't understand you. I will bless the Lord at all times. And this praise will continually be in my Mount, oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. When I worship, I'm giving God my obedience. Oh, man. And obedience woo, looks different to man than it does to God. Because people who are carnal may think you're not successful. But you can be broke and in the will, and you can be rich and rebellious. As Job, Job was obedient, and God brought his name up so that he can brag on him. What if the trial in the wilderness and the situation that you're in are bragging rights for your Savior. He wants to boast in the fact that he knows you won't be weary and well-doing. He said, look at my girl enduring. Look at my son. Keep blessing me and keep worshiping me even though he don't feel like it. That's true worship. Worship is not supposed to be convenient. And it does not require music. Here we go. Wake up, Grandma. Even though even though <laughs> I'm weak even though <laughs> worship even though worship I can pick on her she can't beat me no more she can't she don't have that she don't have the agility like she used to I can come here <laughs> even though worship does not require music the Bible is very clear that God enjoys the sound of worship. It's a sound. Make a joyful noise. There's something about a sound. This is why you got to find a song. Because when you don't know what to pray, you can find a song. When your strength is fading, you can find a song. When temptation is knocking at the door. Come on, don't look at me in that tone of voice. Some, some of us invite temptation because we're listening to the wrong thing. I'm not even trying to judge you, but if you already know you're weak, why would you play my mind as telling me no? Uh 
Oh, oh, saints, don't look at me like that. Come on, I'm coming for the Marvin Gaye spirit too. Let's get it on. Ah, baby. No, let's not get it on. Let's turn it off and turn on some worship. That's half the battle right there. That's half the battle. Ask me how I know. I had to change the soundtrack. That even when temptation was knocking, my spirit, because of the atmosphere of worship, wouldn't agree with even what my body wanted. I wish I had a witness in here. I'm not telling you the craving's going to go away. I'm going to tell you you can drown them out with some worship. My God, is there anybody in this room that ain't too bougie or religious to remember that it was a song that got in your spirit and helped you? And I love this about God. He's so smart that God sometimes will get you to sing what you won't say. Come on, overflow. I know you can attest. God sometimes will get you to sing what he can't get you to say. You ever been singing something one time and then you thought about what you're saying? I surrender all. All. Take everything I don't want. Wait, I actually do kind of want that, though. <laughs> He'll get you to sing what you won't say, because you really said, take Terrence. Take Amanda. She fine, though. I don't want. Take this marijuana. Come on, come on. <laughs> Gotta get you to sing what you won't say yet. And that's why everybody needs a song for the season. Because seasons change, man. But you can't lose your song. Ecclesiastes 3, I gotta speed up. It says this, it says, to everything there is a season. A time for every purpose under the heaven. And I'm going to tell you guys, I'm so excited about this series. We're speeding up the messages. We're condensing them, making them quicker. Because at the end, we're going to respond with worship. We're going to open it up, and you can come back to the front to worship. And just like last week, we're going to do this every week. There's going to be shorter messages because we want to engage in worship at the end of it. And if you leave early, we will stone you in the parking lot. As in the Bible days, we will shame you. The ushers will lock the door and say, no, 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 spit your gum out and go back to your seat. <laughs> to everything, there's a season. To everything, there's a season. To everything. And if you live long enough, you know seasons come, seasons go. Man, they'll change on you. What season you singing, Stephen Wonder? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Next season, you're singing, it's so hard. To say goodbye to yesterday. Come on, we got to sing in church. <laughs> Seasons change. One thing you're singing, meet me at the altar in your white dress. Next thing you're singing, although we've come to the end. Uh, why y'all not in the choir? <laughs> Come on, even, even the seasons change with our gospel songs. One season you're singing, so I throw up my hands and praise you again and again. I'm grateful. Gratitude. Next thing you're singing, precious Lord. Sounded like Rosa Parks. <laughs> Take my hand, lead me on, let me stand. I am tired. She can't let that go. She got a song of her spirit. Come get a microphone. Through the sun. Seasons change. You can have a high moment and in one day it becomes a low moment. Seasons change. That's why you got to find you a song for the season. And you never know how quick seasons change. You can be holding a grudge today and then tomorrow is too late. To reconcile. You could be putting off family time. When I retire, we'll take a family trip, but you don't know if everybody in the family photo will still be alive when you retire. 
because seasons will shift on you without your permission, without your agreement, without your consent, without your opinion, without your authorization. Seasons will shift on you in a day. You can go from the mountain to the valley in a day. You can go from healthy to finding a symptom. What is this I feel? In a day, you can go from your marriage being great to one bad night, one poor decision, and your season shifts on you. But I got good news if you want to hear it. As quick as a season can shift south, you serve a God who can shift that season in your favor. I like to call him the season shifter. Does anybody know the season shifter? This God of mine is able to take your weeping, though it endure for a night, and shift it. They give you joy in the morning. They that sow in tears, God can take those tears and shift it so that you reap in joy. That God can shift your mourning into dancing. He can shift your sorrow into joy. He can shift you from the borrower to the lender, from the back of the line to the front of the line. I wish you'll grab your neighbor and tell him, it's my shifting season. God can shift what the enemy meant for evil and shift it around for you to call it good. How do I know? Because Romans 8, 28, help me Holy Ghost, says, For I know all things work together for the good of those who love the Lord and are called according to its purpose. I need you to do me a favor. Grab your neighbor like you mean it and tell him it's about the shift, baby. It's about the shift. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's about the shift. Oh yes, it's about to shift. Be careful how you treat me in this season. God's about to shift it. I'm holding them up today. I'm signing a check tomorrow. God's about to shift it. I know I don't look like much. I know my car breaking down. And I know you don't want to stay at my place. But homegirl, God's about to shift this thing and turn it around in my favor. If you know you serve the shifting season, God, give them a good start in the room. There's more to me. There's more than me than what meets the eye. And maybe, you're going to hit somebody. Maybe, perhaps, this is why you feel so agitated in this season. This is why things that you used to enjoy now annoy you. Y'all used to stay up all night on the phone and just hear each other breathe. Who is something about the way he breathed, child? <laughs> Three o'clock in the morning. <laughs> you up? I'm still up. I'm still here. I just. And now when the name pop up, you're like, ooh, child, I ain't got time. What happened? Something shifting in you. And God will always shift something on the inside before you shift something on the outside. Ooh, I wish you would grab your name and tell him God is getting ready to shift you. God, before he shifts the season, he shifts something in you. And so don't back down. Don't run away. Don't go into hiding when God starts bothering stuff. I want to give you a scripture that Jesus said that maybe you never read like this. It's in red. And you can't just read your Bible. You got to read your Bible. Luke 6 says this. Give and it shall be given unto you. Watch the Bible. Good measure. Press down. Hold on. And running over. Before there's overflow, God got to shake some stuff. Did you hear what I just said? Some of y'all saying, God, I'm ready for overflow. God said, but can you last when I'm shifting and shaking? So I'm shaking the leaves so the ones that don't belong can fall off. I'm shaking relationships. I'm shaking status. I'm shaking what you thought you needed because I'm getting ready to open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing you can't receive. I want you to put your neighbor in the kneecap and tell them, let them shift it. Let them shift it. Let them shake it. Let them break it. Let him. You got 20 seconds to lift your hands and tell them shift what you want to shift. Shake what you want to shake. Change what you want to change. Break what you want to break. My storage is empty. I am available for your shift. I'm available for your move. When I can't see it, when I don't feel it, I know you're working. He's the guy who shifts when he wants to add more I researched it because you know I got a master's in theology so I went to chat GPT and I said why did Jesus say 
pressed down, shaking together. And Chad GBT said, because you got to shake the barrel so that any empty space can be filled. Good God, did you hear what I just said? Before God can add to what you got, maybe you're already full. So God said, no, no, there's more space. There's more capacity. I just got to get you uncomfortable. I just got to shake some stuff that you think you need so I can create space to give you what you can't even imagine. I came to tell somebody eyes haven't seen, ears haven't heard what God's about to drop on your life. I wish you will open up your heart and say, God, pour it on me. Shake it. Shift it. Shake it. Good God. Shift it. Shake it. Shift it. Shake it. He does it internally before anybody sees it externally. And it is, it's a curse word, uncomfortable. One indication that it might not be God is if it's too enjoyable. Because the devil would love to love you in comfort. He'll just lower you. He'll just, I'm comfortable, but you're not growing. I spoke to somebody on the phone the other day. I said, how's your spiritual walk, man? He said, he said, I'll say I've been uh, consistent. I said, ooh, red flag. I said, I say this in love, but that just means you're maintaining. You don't want to be consistent. You want to be growing. You want to be getting anchored. You should be going deeper. You, I want the response to be, how's your spiritual walk? Man, God been bothering me again. Man, right when I got comfortable, God removed something. Right when I thought I had it figured out, he shifted it. Right when I thought this one was for me, he exposed it. God is the one who will shift stuff to prepare you for what he wants to pour on you. I got to move because we're not leaving early because no one wants to get stoned. Gideon. Gideon in Judges 6 was always a mighty warrior. He didn't know it. You can't just read the Bible. You got to read the Bible. The Bible says 300, 300 defeats 120,000 Midianites. That's one to 400. The odds are stacked against him. But before God shifted the 300, he shifted Gideon in the wine press. Before God shifted Jericho's wall, he shifted Joshua at the tent of meeting. For the Bible says in Exodus 33 that when Moses would meet with God as a friend meets face to face, the Bible says when Moses would leave the tent, Joshua would stay. Can I tell you something? Joshua wasn't just staying there cleaning up. Something was shifting in him to prepare him for what God was about to do on the outside. God would shift you before he shifted. it. Did you hear what I just said? God would shift you before he shifts it. Are you praying for the wrong thing? Instead of praying, God, change this situation, God, change me in the situation. Yeah. Not God, fix this, fix me. Yeah. And so before God shifts Israel from the hands of Saul to the hands of David, he has to shift David. Yeah. And this brings us to our text. The Bible says in Psalm 40, verse 1, I waited patiently for the Lord. He turned to me and heard my cry. See, David learned how to wait on God. He learned how to wait on God. He learned how to wait on God. See, when you think about waiting, you think about looking at a clock. That's not waiting. Waiting is serving. And David knew how to serve God. Any waitresses or waiters or ex-waitresses or waiters? Come on, anybody in here? Come on, wave your hands. If you work at Hooters, wave at me. Put some clothes on. I'm trying to eat my wings. Have you ever? <laughs> my wife and I just figured this out, and it's so annoying. Have you ever gone to a restaurant, and the waiter was horrible the whole time? You choking. They see you choking and won't bring you no water. Everybody else getting bread. All I want is some warm bread. Horrible. Ain't it funny that when they come to bring you that bill, miraculously, 
Oh, what a cute baby you have here. I pray you have a blessed day. May the Lord watch between me and thee while we're at the... Get away from my table. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that's not waiting. That's manipulating for an outcome. And many of us treat God the same way. We think we can have any kind of attitude, any kind of temperament. We think we can be nasty. We think we can have a, I don't feel like it today. I just don't feel like, that's why I got, I just don't feel like being nice. I got time today. And then we come to church. And we put on our Christian lingo, hoping to get a tip from heaven. And God said, I've been sitting here all week and you wouldn't host me and you wouldn't wait on me and you wouldn't worship me. Why do you have to wait till you get in church with people jumping around on stage to finally give me a praise? Don't you got a CD player? Don't you, but beyond that, don't you got a mouth? Ain't your voice the instrument? I wish I had somebody in here who knew how to wait on God. Now I look this up. I look this up and we got to roll. I look this up. I just had this idea. I said, I wonder who waits on the president. This is what I found. It's so interesting. The waiters on the president, many times at the White House, they've served there for decades. It's a tradition. But they go through rigorous training, hear me, and they recruit most of them from the Navy. They got to be trusted because they hear different secrets and they're just around and they got to be trusted. Highly, highly skilled, highly trusted. They're trained. And I thought, if a waiter will go through training to serve the most powerful man in the free world, how much more of a privilege it is to serve the king of the universe. Ladies and gentlemen, this ain't a burden. Ain't nobody got to beg me to serve in church. Ain't nobody got to beg me to give in church. Ain't nobody got to beg me to clap my hands. That's why we don't do that here. We ain't at the church one say, come on, come on, come on, clap your hands. Come on, come on, come on. If you got to be begged to worship, you got to be pumped to worship. David said, I don't need no cheerleader. I enter his gates with thanksgiving. Good God. Every time I think about it, I enter his gates with thanksgiving. I enter his courts with Is there anybody who brought worship with you? You don't need a worship man. You don't need an A, B, and selection. You came with a made up mind that I will bless the Lord because he's worthy of it. That's why I praise him. Here we go. And I don't need my favorite song to do it. My waiting is my worship. My waiting is my worship. I got to get out of here. The Bible says, Psalm 40, I waited patiently on the Lord. What's the Bible? And he turned. Good God. And he turned. When I wait, he turns. When I wait, I get the attention of heaven. Now, I got to do this really quick because we're going to worship. No one's going to get stoned today. I, one of my favorite stories it's found in 1 Samuel chapter 30. I love this story because it's the story of David. Quick story, quick story. Uh, David comes back to Ziklag after a battle with his men, 600 men. They come back to battle. They come back from battle in Ziklag. Ziklag is very important to David because David's been on a run for over 10 years, right? And so now he has stability. This is where he sets up his military operations. The stability has his family here. The Bible says they come back. All of their families are kidnapped. None of them are killed, but they're kidnapped. And the Bible says that the city is burnt down. They get there. And everybody's panicking. And this is what happens. We're going to read just a little bit in verse 6. The Bible says, David was greatly distressed, as any of us would be. For the people talked of, here we go. There go that word again. Stoning him. Because all the people were bitter in spirit. The Bible says, I love this. They were bitter in spirit over their sons and their daughters. This right here is my part. But... David, good God, but David encouraged himself in the Lord. Listen, listen, ladies and gentlemen, there are going to be moments in your life, just live long enough, where you got to encourage yourself. There'll be certain funerals you attend that you're going to want to go on the ground with your loved one. And when you leave that funeral, you got to encourage 
yourself. There'll be people who betray you, who you were counting on, and you got to learn how to encourage yourself. And David said, watch this, he'll be a thought of priest, priest, son of Ahimelech. He said, yo, bring me the ephod. I love this. Bring it to me. Bring it to me. Beathar brought it to him, and the Bible says, he inquired with the Lord, shall I pursue? Will I win this battle? And the Lord responded, he said, yeah, yeah, go ahead and pursue, for you shall recover all. Verse 9. So David went, and the 600 men went with him. Now hear this, hear this, hear this, hear this, hear this. Verse 6, they're planning his execution. Verse 9, they're marching with him. Wait a minute. Verse 6, guns loaded, they about to kill the man. Verse 9, they're marching with him. I read this, and you know you can't just read the Bible. You got to read the Bible. I read this case, and I said, wait a minute. I don't understand what happened in those three verses. As a matter of fact, there is no context at all for this. There is no scripture that tells us he speaks to the man. He begs for his life. Friends, Romans, countrymen, lend me your ears. There's no scripture that suggests that he asked them, come on, y'all, spare me. Think about all we've been through. He don't have no talk with them. Watch this. He has to talk with Jesus. And it teaches me something. When people turn on you, child, you better learn how to turn to God. And when you turn to God, you're saying, it's your turn, God. I'm taking my hands off of it, your turn. I'm taking my mind off of it, your turn. I'm getting my rest back, your turn. You can do what I can't do with this situation. And I love what happens. And we're done. This is it. I love what happens. David asked for the ephod. He don't ask for his sling. Because there's some new battles that you can't use old weapons for. He don't ask for a sword. He don't ask for a shield. He don't need a shield. For thou, Lord, art a shield for me, my glory and the lifter of my head. He don't ask for anything of the natural. He taps into the spiritual realm. He says, God, this is a battle that only you can fight. So I'm going to encourage myself in the Lord, and I'm going to wait on you. And while I'm waiting, you're working. Did you hear what I said? My worship isn't wasted. As I worship him, he'll work situations out that are beyond my control. He encourages himself. In other words, he found a new way to fight. God is trying to teach you, come on, a new way to fight. You know how to fight with your, you cuss real good. He's trying to teach you a new way to fight. You fight with the addiction. Really, you're just medicating. You're trying to drown out something that's happening. God wants to teach you a new way to fight fight. He want to teach you a new way to fight for the mother trying to raise those children. A new way to fight for the husband fighting for your marriage. A new way to fight for the student that just want to graduate on time. Come on. He want to teach you a new way to fight. Teach you a new way to fight. But you got to find a song for the season. Because seasons change. But you can't lose your song. Tell somebody, get your song. Get your song. Get your song back. This is my story. This is my song. I was praying about this and I said, God, how can I show them how to fight? He said, Travis, it's easy. Just show them how you fight. Bring me my weapon. Bring my weapon. See, y'all don't know I'm, I'm trained in ninja dim. <laughs> no, man. Bring, bring me my real weapon. Bring me my weapon. Bring my, this is my weapon. This, this is... This is... It's my weapon. He taught me how to fight. He taught me how to get a song for the season. I faced some stuff that words weren't enough. One of those moments were in 1996. My mother was dying. And I remember she would sit me and my sisters down. Kim is here. And she would sit us down and say, hey, y'all, your daddy's going. So, you know, the doctor says it's not looking good for me. If something happens, call this person, do this. We will always stop her and say, no, 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 mom. No, mom, don't talk like this. Well, my mom's still here. <laughs> but she had, she had a song for the season. And mom would get in that car. Back then, you got to be real picky with your CDs because you had to sit something you had to put in the trunk. Y'all remember that? She had this one city. She would always play. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. It won't work. No weapon formed against me 
It was our song for the season. Shall prosper. It won't win. And then um, I met my wife 17 years ago. And I remember she was in a shifting season. And she would just play this song over and over and over. It was a song for the season. It's a very complicated song. It says, yeah, 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 my soul says, yeah, 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 oh, yeah. And then we got pregnant with our first child and her water broke and um, at 21 weeks. And uh, she was in the hospital for two months and I would stay with her on that uncomfortable couch. And I would lay there with the Bible. And I don't know why, but I just kept playing this song. It was my song for the season. It says, you provide fire. And I provide the same. If you pour out the Spirit, woo, oh, I will open up the side. Feel me uh, over and over. Feel me uh, shake what you gotta shake. Feel me uh, God. Feel me uh. And then it kept getting worse. Because <laughs> sometimes it'll get worse on you. And when it got worse, and she kept losing fluid, Keisha, and the doctor said, it don't look good. The Lord put a new song in my mouth. And I called her on FaceTime. We got an iPhone, you know what that is. I called her on FaceTime. <laughs> this is a true story. And I picked up my weapon. I had prayed everything I knew how to pray. I called on the name of Jesus, and I called on the blood of Jesus, and I... We prayed together over and over, but the Lord put a new song in my mouth. It's a true story. I called her. 2014. I picked up my weapon. I said, baby, we're standing here. Not knowing how we'll get through this test. It looks bad right now. But holding on to faith, you know, best. We serve a big God. Nothing can catch you by surprise. You've got this figured out, and you're watching us now. And when it looks as if we can't win, yes, Lord, somehow you wrap us in your arms and step in. And everything we need to supply you. God, this in control, and now we, he put a new song in my mouth. You may when our backs were against the wall, and it looked as if it was why you may I, yes, Lord, and we're standing here on. We gotta go, but jump on your feet and help me sing. You move mountains, you cause walls to fall with your power. But for me, we go. There is nothing that's impossible, and we're standing here. Go to D, and um. Just imagine David waiting on the Lord. All he sees is smoke, 600 men against him. But he encouraged himself in the Lord. And I don't know what new song David sung, but in my mind, he might have sung, This is how I fight my battle. Whoa, whoa, whoa. This is how I fight my battle. Whoa. This is how I fight my battles. 
This is how I fight my battles. Come on, tell them. It may look like I'm. It may look like. Come on. This is how I fight my battles. Say, this is how I. That's it, church. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I. Say, this is how I fight my battles. 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 I dare you to get out of the aisle and declare it. Say, it may look like I'm so. This is how I fight my battles. Hey! Anybody can declare it. Hey! This is how I fight my battles. Whoa! This is how I fight my battles. This is battles. how I fight my battles. Hey! It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. Oh, it may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. I know who I'm surrounded by. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. This is how I fight my battle. When my hands go up, and this is how I fight my battles. When my hands go up. This is how our hands go up and praise this loud. This is how I fight my battles. Anybody can't prepare to fight this morning. Lift your hands, say, This is how I fight. This is how I fight my battle. This is how I fight my battle. This is how I fight my battle. Even though it may not look like it. This is how I fight. This is how I fight my battle. This is how I fight my battle. I will not be silent. This is how I fight my battle. This is how I fight my battle. Hey, family, thank you for checking out this week's message. I pray something was said or done that can inspire you to live a transformed life in Jesus Christ. I believe that the future is waiting on you and you're about to move into it. So make sure you like and subscribe right now to the YouTube page so you can check out all the messages every week right here. Love you.